Hello and welcome to this tutorial with me Groover. Now today I've got for you an iron farm. It's a 99.9% .9 efficient iron farm. I did actually have another 99.9% .9 efficient iron farm but it had a couple of issues and I'd just like to say thank you very much to Mindrace over at the Van Revo server for pointing them out to me. He's helped me out a lot with that by pointing them out, stress testing, all sorts of things. So thank you very much to Mindrace. And yeah, I've actually gone back to the drawing board, found a little bit of a new system with this. It's kind of similar to the previous one. It's a little bit bigger. It's actually 20 blocks by 25 blocks as a footprint. The previous one was 18 by 19. Um, so yeah, a little bit bigger on that one. But otherwise, it's been going very well. I've got a little scoreboard thing. Let's see if I can get that up. Yep, there we go. So if I go over and have a look over here, I've got some command blocks running. And one of them is actually just counting the golems as they come out. The other one's re-tagging them as being counted. And this one's clearing down the scoreboard. So I just ran this for an hour and I managed to get 13 golems. Now out of a single village you'd expect to get 10. So 13 is very good. There is a bit of variance in these things. So you know they can get 13 one turn and then next hour you get 7 so you get the average of 10. But you know, I'm happy with 13 in the first hour. It just shows that things are working in the right direction. So that's 52 iron, 17 poppies. And I've had seven golems so far since I've since I reset the counter. And what's that? 29 iron ingots and eight poppies. It's kind of variable. You get some lucky hours, you get some bad hours. But generally this should be putting out around about 10 golems every single hour. So this one, I actually hooked up the um, spawning system to a 32 village golem farm and a 32 village farm, <laughs> a 32 village farm. And um, I was watching the golems drop. Nothing was getting stuck. Everything was going absolutely fine. So I'm very happy with this. I'm pretty certain that there shouldn't be any problems, but sometimes you have to put things out to the community to find out the issues that might be there. So why don't we go and have a look at building one of these? Right, so the first thing that you're going to want to check before you start building your iron farm or any iron farm is um, the villages in the area. So you want to make sure that this is not within a 65 block range of any other village. And, you know, you can these are okay. You can have doors within the 65 block range, but if you get a villager up there, then those doors are going to register. Now, I know that this is all clear because I don't have any villagers in any of these at the moment except from this one down here, and I know that's 70 blocks away. So I know that's fine. That's no problem at all. So you want to check that before you do anything. Make sure you've got no villagers around the area. Otherwise, it could make a complete mess of this. <laughs> okay, so this is what you're going to need. So these things in the top left hand corner are more like you need a quantity of these. These are not exact numbers. You're going to need a lot of half slabs, you're going to need a lot of full blocks, you're going to need a lot of signs, a lot of water. Um, you can just get away with two buckets or a load of ice, whichever way you want to do it. And a bit of glass, you don't need 64 glass to be honest. Now, the things on the right here are the things that you're absolutely going to need as a minimum. So the lava bucket, one bucket of lava, 22 doors, 28 wooden trap doors, six torches, well, six light sources, thereabouts, just need some light sources really. And then the chest and the hoppers are just your basic storage system. So you're going to need at least those to make up your storage system to get yourself going. Now, once you've done this, you can make it so they all hooks up to an automatic system, whatever you want. This is just me showing you the basics of where things come out and then you can do what you want from there really. So let's go and build this. Right, first things first, we need to put down our little storage system. So I've already marked out the center of this area. Now, this I actually made a mistake in the first part there. This is 24 by 20. So this one is, oh gosh, well, it's the middle of it really. <laughs> You're not going to need to worry about that too much yourself. So here we go, I'll just put down a couple of chests and then I put a couple of hoppers straight into the back of them. Boom, boom, boom. And there you go. That's our collection point sorted. Next, we're going to want to have a little golem chute coming down from the collection area, which is going to go directly above. So we want to go up five with this. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the reason that we do that is because a golem's three tall. So we put signs at this level, lava at this level, and another layer of signs at this level. Now, the extra layer of signs aren't obligatory, but, you know, I think it's good thinking, to be honest, because 
when you're up at the top if you make a mistake and the water gets down here and gets to your lava you've got to deal with your mistake and an obsidian block in the middle of your farm and that can be a huge pain so I, I would say make sure that you put your signs in above and below the lava and if you do have any problems the signs save you so we need to just put that all the way around here whoops not there like this do, 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 do. and then going up to that level so let's do that right there we go so you'll notice straight away that i've actually left this area open at the front now i normally do this when i'm building farms like this just because i might need access and i know that the golems are over two blocks high so they're not going to be able to get out they're just going to wait there for me until i'm ready so i like to leave this open so i can get in and out if i need to so first up is to put some signs in and that's at the wrong level sorry <laughs> you need to put them at head height so right there and then on the opposite side the same and then above and there we go so that's where the lava is going to sit you've got your signs above and below and that's your drop shoot ready so next up is we need to build out this collection platform so let's get rid of that and that because I don't need those anymore let's get some of these other blocks up on my bar right so the collection platform is going to be the full 20 by 24 from this area so if we say that's one that's two then you need to go eight from the outside so let's see one two three four five six seven eight so that's that to there now on this side we need to do ten going out in this each direction so we've got hypothetically one at that's there then two and then three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's 10 blocks, not including these two, 12 from the center. Now you need to do the same on the opposite sides here. So you've got 10 going out this way, or eight going out this way, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then 10 going out this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And there we go. Now we just need to connect all of this up and turn it into a nice big platform. And yeah, let me go away and do that and I'll show you what I've got. Right, so there we go. That's my little platform put in there. One thing that you're going to need to think about is lighting down here. I'm not going to do any of that at the moment because, you know, that's entirely up to you. But I'm playing in creative and I don't need to worry about the lighting, basically. <laughs> I've got it on permanent day, no problems, never going to kill me. But for yourselves, make sure you get a little bit of lighting in just to stop any of those spawns. Now, that's the full platform. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is go around the outside and we need to go up two all the way around. So like this. Whoops, not quite like this, more like this. Okay, so I'll go and get on with that and see you in a moment. Right, so that is what we now have. Now next up we're going to get the water sources in. Now what you want to do is you want to miss these two in the corner and go one, two, three, you want to go all the way across with that basically and right up to the other corner and miss those two as well. Now you'll see that that isn't quite making its way all the way up there. So in the middle here with these four middle blocks, so one, two, that's the, they're aligned with that. Yep, they are. Three and four. I'm going to put two there and then I'm going to put a water source right on top of them like that and then I can take the blocks away. Now that should meet up exactly with our little middle thing here it's all pointing in the right direction and I'll just show that to you on this side as well so if I go ahead and fill in a load of these then you'll see that things are flowing sort of into that corner and then we've got one final block to put in actually nearly forgot that one and that's right there you want to put it against that top block and not into the bottom corner there because if you put it in the bottom corner there it's just going to create water sources all the way across this so you want it to go right on the top block you can do the same trick like I did there and just make a little little corner thing um, but yeah, I'll get on with actually filling in the rest of this and I'll show you the results. Right, there we go. That's everything done. So what you'll find is that wherever golem falls down here, they're going to get pushed into that center area and they're going to get dropped down. So you see I'm sort of heading off target, yeah, getting pushed back on target and then drop in. So that's absolutely perfect. 
So that's our catch tray. Now I can't remember if I mentioned this, but the reason that we're doing it like this is so that we can get the golems out of the farm as quickly as possible, dropped out of the village so that we can release the golem cap and then just get them processed. Once they're outside the village, the village can start thinking about processing and making more golems. So the sooner you do that, the more efficient the farm's going to be. Right, so next up we need to build up another ring. Now we want to go one, two, three, four, and then five. So we're going to have a gap of four and then the fifth one right here. So exactly like that. And then you're going to need to turn that into a ring that goes all the way around, traces this line exactly. So let's get on with that. So this is what you should now have. And you want to go to one of your long edges because we're going to put in some of the spawning platforms next because that seems most sensible to work from the bottom upwards. So you want to go to one of your long edges. You want to count out two and then miss that and then go onto your third block and you want to put in a couple of blocks down, so one, two, and three. And then you can put in some half slabs on top half of those blocks. And then those can be taken away. You don't need them anymore. So that's what you're looking for. So we've got two, and then we're going to go three across with this. And then we're going to miss two again. Bump, bump. And on this one here, we're going to do the same. Bump, bump, bump. And then slabs on the top. And then three. So we turn that into a three wide. So I haven't explained it very well there, but it's easier if you have a look. So you've got a gap of two, then three, then a gap of two, then three, and then you can have a gap of two, then three, then a gap of two, and then three, and blah, blah, blah. And what you should end up with is a gap of two at the end with three, and so on and so forth. So let me get on with that, and I'll show you what I get. Right, so there you go. That's the kind of configuration that you're looking for. Now, I'll put in the next couple of layers above this so that you get an idea of where we're going. And then we'll drag them all the way across to the other side as well. So they're running right the way across. So we're going to miss this one here. And then we're actually going to have doors at this level here. And then we're going to have a half slab there and a half slab there. Now, we can take that door back out. And I'll show you with some blocks. So we'll go one, two, because that's the same height as a door. And you want them on the top half of the, of the blocks there. And they want to be three wide as well, just like the ones below. Now, you can go ahead and make this all the way across. But what I would say is, don't do these top two yet. Because we need to get water in the middle block of these ones going all the way across. So you can do the bottom three, then I'd leave these ones until you've got the water in, and then you can do the top two, and then you're halfway there. So I'll get on and sort of make this look how it's meant to look, and show you the results. Okay, so this is what it now looks like, and we need to run those over to the other side. So you can go down and just start laying these out. This is actually much easier than the other farm which I made, um, the other 99% efficient farm, because you don't have as many... Um, things to place it's just mainly the platforms here so let's run those across so there you go and now you can do that with those bottom three right here for each of those so you can do all of those exactly the same so I'll get on with that and I'll see you in a moment now that's what that should look like now so next up we need to actually work out where the villagers are going to go now this is slightly technical, you need to get this right, otherwise the villagers aren't going to register all the doors and you're going to have problems. So you want to go to either the south or east side of your build. So if I just get my F3 screen up there, you can see that I'm facing west, so therefore this is the east side. And this should be the south side over here. So you've either built it in that direction with the runners sort of going across that way, or you built it in the same direction as me. Now it doesn't matter which direction you've built in, you just need to make sure that you get your villagers on the south or east side. So I'm going to place mine here because I'm facing west and I'm at the, this end of it, so therefore this is east. So we need to make a little pouch here for the villagers to sit in. Now the way that I did it was, I go up to and then just go straight across like this. And this is all in 1.10, so I'm using the trapdoors to keep them back, which have got a really slim hitbox, which is kind of nice. I like that. It doesn't matter how much of this length they actually get to use, that's entirely up to you. 
um, but I'm just going to knock them in a couple of blocks so that they're not too close to that edge. So let's see. But, 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 but. So this is where they're going to stand. Now I'm going to run a row of temporary blocks across here. And I'm doing this now so that we remember exactly where the villagers are going to go and we get this right next time. So where are my trap doors? There they are, right in the middle. Going blind here. <laughs> so we just need to run them across like that. So, And then same on the other side. Now you want to make sure they're all in the this position. And then you can take out that row of blocks that we put in and that's your village holder area. Now you can do this however you like from the other side. You can have blocks sticking out as far as you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, but on the inside you want to use the trapdoors just because they've got a really slim hitbox and when the golems get pushed off they're about 1.7 wide. There's enough space for them to go past these trapdoors without getting trapped on them. So that's why we're doing it like this. Right, so this bit is really important. If you get this wrong, then your village is not going to be centred in the right place. And the entire intention is that the centre of the village is sort of over there somewhere, but the corner of the village, one corner's here, one corner is in the same position over here, and then one right there, and one right there. So that leaves a one extra block gap around each side, because I've actually seen the golem spawn just like so far to the corner here they're basically on the other block now i don't want to block that i want to make sure that they can spawn basically right into that block without any problem so we need to get this bit right so from the villager end we count out five blocks one two three four five and then on the sixth block bang that's your first door so you want to put in 11 doors on each side counting out in that direction so two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now you'll see you've actually got more blocks at this end spare so if you look at the equivalent here you've got a gap of five and then you've got a gap of six so that's because the village center has a bit of a propensity to be over there on the northwest side so that's why we're doing it like this so we're going to go ahead and do the same on the other side there. So there we go, that is all of the doors placed. That's all 22 doors in. You only need 21 doors to actually start spawning golems. So 22 just keeps it balanced and nice and tidy. Um, so all of this area here, this ring around here, you don't actually need it. You can get rid of it if you want. Um, the system which I had down below is just, I, I built it up with blocks and glass and just made it like a viewing area in. So, yeah. Right, so next up, we're actually going to put in some signs. So, what we're going to want to do is have signs going from here all the way to the same point on the other side there. So, we're just going to shift click those on, which is absolutely delightful in 1.10 and 1.9 because you can just hold shift you got no problems at all. Right, there we go, that's the full thing. I've run nine on each side, so nine from that side, nine from that side. And that's just because if you break one of these here, you've only got those ones to replace instead of the entire run. So, you know, it's, it's more in case of accidents, things happen. And you want to do the same here and here. And you're going to have guessed it. You want to do the same right over here and here and here, here and here. Right, so let's go ahead and get those filled in and have a look at the results. Right, so that's what you should now have. Now I'm just going to do the real quick thing. I'm going to run down the middle of these blocks here on each one and just put in some water sources. So this is what you want to do next. Right, so there we go. That's the water sources in there. Next up, we need to put in a, another set of spawning platforms. 
So let's get those in now. So that's these ones that we marked out earlier. And you just want to drag those over to the other end, same as we did before. So let's get on with it. That's the top two spawning platforms all finished and ready to go. I just built up this over here, which is a little bit of a demonstration of some blocks that you are going to need on this area. These can be glass or anything you like. It's not a problem. If you use glass, actually, it's probably a good idea because then it makes the top of them non-spawnable. So, yeah, you need these kind of formations here at the sides. And that's just to make sure that we've got something to hang the signs off and the golems don't somehow get pushed out to the sides here. But personally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run around and fill in all of the sides and just make it look a little bit pretty and show you what I've got at the end of it. And then we'll place some more signs. So I'll see you in a moment. Right, so that's what I've got. I just put a little viewing area in at the front there so you can actually watch things happening from one of the sides. So you've got a pretty clear view all the way through. And down the sides here I just went for four blocks. But like you saw on the one at the beginning of the video, a lot of these can be glass if you want, you can have viewing areas in, whatever you want, it doesn't really matter that much. As long as you've got full blocks, not a big issue. Right, so, next up, we want to put in some more signs. <laughs> now, this is kind of signs-heavy um, build, but, you know, it will be worthwhile. Right, so what we want to do is basically exactly what we did down there. We want to put in nine signs on each side, right there, directly above, at this level. So, let's get on with that. Right, that's all of the signs placed in. So we've just got a few more little things to do and we're ready to put the villagers in and do a little bit of testing. So first up is we want to put in some water sources, same as we did below. So we'll just quickly splosh those down the middle. Make sure that you do get them down the middle of the block as well, because if you don't, you could have problems. You don't want them turning into water sources, because if they turn into water sources, the golems aren't going to get pushed off properly. And the reason that this works is because golems will spawn in in the middle of slabs. And if you get them in like a three block gap like this, then they can be pushed out on either side using the water. And they'll just sort of push out because they're actually 1.7 blocks wide. So yeah, at any point wherever they are, part of them is always going to be more to one side than the other. And they're going to get pushed out in that relevant direction. So there we go. That's all of the water in. Now, next up, it's something which um, Mind over on the Van Revo servo actually, actually mentioned to me. And this was if you're building this in a really cold biome or if you're building at heights and extreme hills, these are going to freeze and you really don't want that. So you, what you want to do is at this level, if I go up one more, so you've got a three block gap from the bottom there. So one, two, three. Um, you want to have a slab there and just run slabs all the way across. So you don't need that back slab anymore. You just need slabs over the top of the water sources. So just like that. Now we also need slabs to actually validate all of the doors. So we can put those in now as well. So at this same sort of level right here, we're just going to run them all the way back and we're going to stop right above the back water source, which is right there. So if we connect that up into a little square. Right, so what that is doing is you've got blocks, you've got doors down here and what you need to do is you need to have more light on one side of the door than the other, not including the block that the door is stood on. So the door is stood on this block. Now some of these doors have got loads of blocks over on that side, some of them don't have any. So this is just making sure that all of the doors are 100% valid and ready to be registered by the villagers. So that's that, and these are just stopping the water sources from freezing. So what we need to do here is we need to do exactly the same and just run a line all the way back above the top of each of the water sources. And only the water sources, you don't need to put it over this part of the water because that is not a water source. Right, there we go. Let's have a little think about what we need to do now. Um, yeah, nothing. Let's put some villagers in. So that's basically everything done. Now we just want to get some villagers in here to actually get the doors registered and everything up and functioning. I'm going to use 20 villagers, which means that this can sustain two golems at a time. So it shouldn't need it, actually. This should run perfectly with 10, no problem at all. But um, I like to put 20 in 
<laughs> just in case, just in case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that block for a piece of glass. Um, because I'm using spawn eggs, it's a little bit different, but you'll get your villagers up here some other way. And the reason I'm putting glass there is that so when I place them on this corner of this block here, the head comes straight into a glass block rather than into a solid block and they start suffocating. So that's the first one. 20. Right. So let's just get a solid block and switch that back out. So that's my 20 villagers in place. They shouldn't be able to go anywhere. Now these light sources that we mentioned, let's get those in quickly. We just want to put a few of them in down here. You shouldn't have any problems with any kind of zombie spawning or anything daft like that. These guys will suddenly spread out and um, I guess we'll be lucky to see that in a moment or two. But that's basically it ready. So there we go. Now all that we need to do is look out for some golem spawns. Oh yeah, and put some lava in at the bottom. <laughs> oh, there we go. That was pretty quick. That was very nice. That was literally a couple of seconds. Now this extra farm is adding to my count on the right hand side there. The count's been going the whole time that I've been up here building. And it's taken a little while. I'm not going to... Not gonna lie, I don't think it's taken a couple of hours, but it's taken a while. So there we go. Putting a, a lava source right up there. I'm gonna fill these blocks back in so that the iron ingots and bits and bobs don't come splurging out the front. Using glass above here so that we can get into the chests and have a look. Clear out the extra signs. Ooh, that was a good one. That was five ingots from one golem. That's very nice. So it occurred to me that I'd be able to actually cut in some footage from the 32 village iron farm with the um, actual spawning platforms fitted above. So you can see them up there and a couple of golems coming down and it, they get cleared out very quickly, very efficiently. And it's great because it frees up the spawning cap for more golems to spawn. So yeah, that's just a little bit of a demonstration of it actually moving them off and them coming down but yeah like I say it's really difficult to capture them actually getting pushed out of the platform because they get moved off so quickly so there you go so just before we wind up this episode let's actually have a little sneak peek at how much iron we've got whilst we've been building that one up above oh look at that that's very nice that's a stack and a bit that's a that's a chunk isn't it so I'd be happy with that in my little world and if I had four of these going well <laughs> who knows maybe i will maybe i will soon i've got my little survival series going and uh i do like my iron okay well thank you very much for watching my tutorial and i hope it was helpful i hope you learned something and i hope you're going to go away and build this and i also hope you're going to leave a like if you've watched it all the way to the end here so thank you very much. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment. If you really enjoy this and want to see more, subscribe to my channel. I'm producing tutorials all the time and I think they're a little bit different to the usual ones. They usually have a little twist on things and I think this is unique. I've never seen anything like this one. So thank you very much for watching and see you again. Goodbye.